Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. I thought I'd take apart my JBC soldering iron here, which I've had for quite some time. Yes, I've been meaning to do a review of it, and uh, I will get around to that, but I thought we'd just have a look and see what's inside. Yeah, it's going to be a linear transformer and a little controller, but anyway, um, it could be interesting to see what the build quality is like, because this is a first-class uh, quality soldering line like uh, $350, $400 worth JBC top brand name and this is from uh, Mechtronics in Australia who uh, supplied this uh, for me. They're the official uh, suppliers here. Anyway, awesome iron. I love it. You've seen it in uh, quite a few uh, videos in uh, recent times. It's my main iron now. I've uh, pretty much ditched my um, Heiko soldering iron because this one is simply brilliant from a thermal capacity uh, point of view. I really love it. It's awesome. And this is the uh, the model is the CD2BB. I believe that the 2SB is like the different uh, voltage version. This is fixed uh, 230 uh, volts. Of course, it's a linear transformer. I don't expect it to have like a uh, tap inside or anything like that. It's made in the EU. There it is. Brilliant. We've got a uh, ground here for an ESD uh, wrist strap. And I don't really like the sort of uh, cheap-ass uh, DIN-type plastic connector they've got here. I don't know. For this quality iron, I would have expected like a uh, metal one. But eh, whatever. Anyway, it's a really awesome iron. I won't bother powering up. Uh, you've uh, seen it before. No, I won't take it. Yeah, it's not. That's the hot end, folks, but hasn't been turned on. Um, I won't take apart the iron itself because uh, that will almost uh, certainly have to, uh, you know, completely rip that apart and uh, damage it. And this is my main iron, so I don't want to do that. But this puppy we can certainly take apart. So let's do that. And of course, it has. As you've seen in uh, previous videos, it has the uh, auto sensing. So as soon as this metal on the uh, iron tip makes contact with the metal in here, it instantly uh, shuts it down and uh, puts it in a um, like a lower temperature mode to uh, save the tip, a tip saving mode. As soon as you take it out, it instantly warms up in like under a second up to your designated uh, temperature. Fantastic. And also, so expect to see some sort of uh, sensor in here. That's why it's all fixed and doesn't have a uh, separate. Um, in fact, I've never taken this off must be a wire in there or something. Let's have a look. Is there? There's got to be. It's going to make a fool out of me. Yep. There we, oh, there we go. The iron's fallen off. But yeah, there we go. We have the wire in there which uh, can sense just a single wire. That can, uh, obviously the commons um, uh, internal, and uh, that can sense that it's uh, making contact there. So that's why you don't get this as a separate. It's sort of not available as a separate uh, station. Uh, which I much prefer. I don't like the integrated uh, holders as much as I uh, like the uh, standalone ones like you get on the Heiko and others. Um, that could take me a while to put that back in. Oh, have I broken it? I don't know. Anyway, let's crack it open. And on the bottom of the unit here, we've got uh, four screws there. Standard Phillips. Looks like it's uh, just going to pop off in halves like that. This screw here is a uh, dome release, and that... I've never taken that out, but that is a dome release. Well, they call it a dome, but it's to get access, it's to change your um, tip cleaning nut steel wool in there. Very nice. So you can, there you go. You can just uh, clean all that. Brilliant. Install a new one. Ah, oh, I'm getting little bits, cruddy bits of solder everywhere, unfortunately. But let's open this thing up. And uh, now the thing with these, um, an iron, oh, that's tight. An iron like this, compared to a uh, sort of like an old style Heiko, for example, is that, uh, well, you know, it's got like an LCD. It's got like a microcontroller in there and everything else. It's like, you know, so if you expect these things to last, you know, 30 years, like, or 25 years, I think my current Heiko has been going, and it'll probably be, still be going for another 25, whether or not something like this, which is more complex electronically then um, you know especially like the LCD you know is that still going to work in 25 30 years time I don't know I wouldn't bet on it compared to you know your traditional simple temperature controlled iron which just has a uh, linear transformer this one's got a linear transformer as well of course um, but I would expect the much simpler ones to have a greater lifespan but anyway I wouldn't trade it 
I really love the functionality of this thing. So it's absolutely brilliant, as we'll no doubt see in a review. But here we go. Let's uh, pop the hood. I'm assuming it's just going to pop off, but that wire will still be attached up here somewhere. So let's... Ta-da! There's our transformer. We've got a couple of flat flex. Ah, oh, right, the flex... Right, goes up to... The Look at that! That's nice! Brilliant! Look at that! There we've got a, um... A nice... like It's like a holder. It's like a holder for the uh, linear power transformer there. That is very nice. Rather impressed by that. And then we've got our flat flex cables. They're actually soldered directly into there. They're not, uh, there's no, there's no connector there. You can see that they're uh, soldered directly in, but they're terminated very nicely. I like that. That's very impressive. I think we're going to have to, well, yeah, how do I get that out? I might have to, yeah, I can see the circuitry down in there. And, oh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Back panel just lifts out. Lovely. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Check it out. There we go. Beautiful little uh, sort of uh, plastic boots on the back of those. Back of those connectors. That's lovely. And uh, to go up to the switch, and then that just goes into the transformer. Pretty darn basic, let me tell you. And um, all of the current for the uh, uh, element, of course, is running through that uh, flat flex. But uh, it's, you know, I think it's uh, pretty beefy. It's obviously uh, more than adequate for the job. And then we've got our um, earth as well going from the mains input here, going directly up to the main board up there. I don't think it goes through to the um, actual uh, iron itself, where you can't actually see it. So, going through. So that uh, tip is obviously isolated from Earth. Well, actually, I was wrong on that. I've never actually measured uh, this iron uh, yet, but no. Look, it is connected directly through to mains Earth there. I've got the uh, meter going through to the Earth terminal on the back, and there you go. The tip is grounded so just be careful when you're soldering things folks you can uh, short stuff out if you have to solder live uh, circuits if you're you know doing uh, battery you know you're replacing one of those batteries in a um, you know a HP 3478A or something like that and you try and uh, solder the thing oops be very careful when your circuits mains earth referenced as well you can get in big trouble but there you go um, it didn't look like it um, based on and the fact that uh, the earth goes up here and then goes all the way through the ribbon all the way up to the top board and then must come back to obviously get in that connector unless there's a trace on the oh, it's probably it might be a trace on the bottom side that could be a double-sided board well could they have chosen uh, bigger beefier screws to <laughs> screw this transformer into place i don't think so brilliant and the transformer i guess that's the brand uh crovisa never heard of it but uh, looks very very nice and of course the uh, the lamination looks absolutely brilliant on it i don't hear any uh transformer hum out of this thing of course you wouldn't expect it from a top quality iron like this and it is uh, very nice the secondary uh there it is uh 23 point uh 5 volts and uh, 12 volts, of course, uh, 230 volts only, so don't go buying an iron from a different country thinking that you can uh, modify it, uh, change the taps or whatever for a different uh, uh, voltage main system. You're just not going to be able to do it. And made in the UE? Huh? Doesn't make sense, but that's actually made in the EU. That's actually just um, uh, Union de Europe if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And so there you go. That's a very nice uh, transformer. They've got, uh, they've got some foam on top of that to hold it in place. Nice attention to detail. I'm really liking this. And there you go. You can actually see the uh, two wires there. Uh, one's going off to that um, uh, to the uh, uh, tip holder or the iron uh, holder and the other's going to the tip replacer which I didn't actually show. This one up here that also has uh, auto sensing so you can actually quickly replace the uh, tips in this thing if the the idea is that you uh, it's not the best but the idea is that you get your iron in there and it, as soon as it touches there it automatically cuts the power and you can remove your tip like that and then you can fast replace tips that's the idea and it does actually work I've uh, uh, actually uh, used it and it does work a treat so they've got the two uh, cut off wires going down in there and I see a microchip pick down in there, some more uh, flat flex obviously going over to the um, LCD on the front. 
see a nice big day or current shunt fuse oh, let's get this board out and there's our main board there's only one board uh, in this thing it contains all the uh, power control power switching and the uh, processing and display stuff as well we've got a uh, chip on board uh, chip on glass sorry um, LCD up here blue backlight that's uh, very nice of course there we go we've got our rubber membrane keys down there oh they don't know better actually stick those back in there so that they align properly when I put it back and uh, got lots of heavy uh, via stitching here really high current stuff of course uh, going from our um, input over here because the uh, transformer tap of course as you saw all the uh, transformer taps down here so all the current uh, from the transformer and the iron what is this 150 odd odd uh, watt iron or something like that uh, so you know um, some reasonably uh, heavy currents here but they have no problem th flowing through the very thick uh, copper clearly inside the uh, flat flex there it's not just ordinary flat flex it would be uh, specified for a fairly high current so that's all she wrote on the bottom of the board no other components it's something of note down in there you'll see that to uh, put this window in here which is um feels like proper glass by the way yeah I think that's uh definitely glass there they've actually uh, heat uh, you know uh, heat welded that in place so that's not uh, coming out anytime soon nice and of course it makes sense to have a glass plate in there because the last thing you want is for your hot iron um, to accidentally fall onto your uh, LCD screen down there and just instantly burn through any uh, polycarbonate or uh, any other uh, plastic type material so glass gonna work a treat brilliant touch and there's the main control board I'll show you some uh, close-ups of some uh, chips in the minute but uh, it looks uh, very well soldered very well assembled very well designed you can see all that heavy via stitching all around uh, some components uh, heavy components there obviously uh, MOSFETs down in there you can tell by the uh, pin out all the pins are shorted together there and there and uh, well uh, one side four and then three and then the uh, gate pin over there and we'll have a look at the microchip microcontroller we've got ourselves a four terminal current shunt here Dale top quality uh, brand of course they're the uh, sense pins there we're going going into a op 07 uh, precision op amp another op 07 there we've got ourselves a uh, a fixed uh, PCB surface mount fuse there it's not uh, socketed SMD type there's another large wattage uh, 10 milliohm current shunt resistor up there and uh, so we've got some uh, 0.22 ohms here and then a uh, sneaky little bugger we've got a uh, one meg there so that's obviously uh, using as, as a high voltage uh, resistor there a couple of discrete transistors large nice large uh, foot uh, prints on here for the uh, passive components really quite like it I'll get in there with the macro lens and we'll see the quality of the uh, soldering but I think you'll find that it's uh, absolutely first class as you'd expect you can see some of the soldering up close there even that huge um, four terminal current shunt resistor a lot of thermal mass in that a lot of thermal mass in the uh, uh, vias and the uh, ground uh, you know with well, the large current traces attached to that soldered absolutely beautifully as are uh, all of the passives and the uh, SO8 perfect amount of solder perfect fillet, uh, fillets on there oppo 7 LM358 another oppo 7 and we've got a couple of devices over here, 3H7. It looks like uh, opto couplers of some sort. And then our power MOSFETs over there, sort of bog standard 4470s, you know, 40 volt uh, N channel uh, devices. Fairly beefy. And that looks like a uh, L4931 low dropout voltage regulator there. We've got some uh, surface mount electrolytics. Uh, don't know what uh, brand they are. I'm not going to bother to. Uh, look them up really not a huge deal we've got our um, speaker down there and we've got our header that's our uh, microchip um, IC SP programming interface and we have oh I didn't expect a uh, DS pick there you go DS pick 33 FJ 256 fair bit of horsepower in this thing um why it needs a DSP instead of a uh, regular um, you know, a microchip uh, pick, I don't know. Running at a uh, lousy 4 megahertz there by the looks of it, but uh, there you go. Didn't expect that at all. And a 24C16 external EEPROM. Wonder what they're using uh, 
that for instead of, uh, you know, or calibration data or something like that, um, instead of the uh, using the internal in the DSP, I don't know. But um, apparently, I think the new model actually has a uh, USB port on it, by the way. This one doesn't. Yes, I just went and checked that, and uh, yes, the latest uh, B model does have a USB port on the uh, back of it. And of course, uh, this one doesn't. So um, uh, whether or not, uh, you know, that's the interface connector for that, I don't know. Pro it could even be a uh, completely different uh, board layout for the new model. Not entirely sure. If anyone's got the uh, latest model with the USB, uh, please post some photos and we can do some uh, comparisons. There's a jumper link there. I don't want to uh, pull that. I might lose my, uh, uh, you know, cow data. It might uh, reset it or do uh, something weird like that. And Well, that's the thing, right? With a soldering iron that requires this much uh, complexity and firmware and USB updating and driving the LCD screen, it's got all the fonts and everything else, dot matrix screen, uh, you know, there's a lot of code in this, and that's a lot of code to go wrong. I mean, that's an infinite amount of more code to go wrong and lock up. Uh, or potentially lock up um, compared to like your basic dumbass iron with your analog control loop. So, you know, look, I've had no problems with it. There's no reported uh, problems at all. Um, they obviously uh, designed this uh, quite well. The layout's quite, uh, you know, it's like ground. It looks like there's a decent, well, there it looks like there is a decent ground plane all under there, but you've got to take, you know, EMI into account. You don't want. Um, you know, uh, to you know, external noise to interfere with this thing and lock up your soldering iron and go to maximum temperature or whatever. You know, it's got to be fairly foolproof, and I'm sure they've really done their uh, homework. JBC, one of the uh, best brand irons on the market, but um, yeah, I don't know. Bloody software. And of course, one of the really uh, neat things about uh, this iron is that it really does have. A, um, well, I believe it has a uh, temperature sensor, a uh, thermocouple, you know, built right into the tip. That's why it's actually got three uh, terminals there, and it actually gives you the uh, tip temperature display um, in uh, real time directly on the LCD on the front panel. So that's fantastic. So yeah, what else can I say, really, apart from this thing? Um, yes, this will be uh, one of the quickest uh, teardowns in a uh, long time, I think. There's, uh, there's not much in it. But it is beautifully made. I must say I am uh, very impressed. It is uh, first class uh, qu design, quality and construction. Exactly what I uh, expected in such a uh, top notch uh, unit. So yeah, um, that really has um, uh, in, even you know greatly increased my uh, confidence in the uh, JBC brand. I really do like them. As I said, I've been using this uh, thing for uh, quite a few months now and uh, I've seen in a couple of videos and well, it is uh, a really an awesome iron. It really is worth every cent. Yeah, it's expensive, but oh man, I just love it. Really do. So anyway, that is the JBC taken apart, all in pieces. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's the JBC uh, CD2BB soldering station. And there you go. That's all there is to it. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EUV blog forum and if you like teardown tuesday please give it a big thumbs up sorry this one's a a little bit uh, short today i've actually got a bugger off it's 5 21 p.m yes i always say that got to go to my strata meeting yay great fun and uh there you go cd 2 b b thank you very much jbc love it quality control tested thanks for that catch you next time